in the previous video we um, looked at the introduction of what is going to be our seven part series understanding systems how they operate and how systems influence people nations communities and uh, organizations and any part or any group of people in any part of the world or in a particular setting we looked at how the whole world is run by systems and that systems are mechanisms of control that govern and regulate and streamline the way of life of the people and uh, once you have a group of people whose way of life whose livelihoods are controlled and governed and streamlined then that produces the culture of the people because it deals with the mental and the psychological infrastructure of the people and today i would like us to start with the things and subjects or systems that have produced results that we are very aware of and familiar with in the world today we are going to be looking at different systems and how they have been deployed and what is it that has guaranteed their success we want to break the backbone of colonialism and slavery as systems from a systems point of view and look at why it succeeded and what the ground was upon which these two evils were sold what is it that guaranteed their success you have for example terrorism today the war on terror because it is something that we are all familiar with. when you kill bin laden and you kill and you kill uh Qasim Soleimani and El Baghdadi you are not you cannot begin celebrating victory over the war on terror you can't declare it mission accomplished because bin laden el baghdadi and Qasim Soleimani, these are just individuals but they are part of a system so by eliminating them you don't deal with a system but you just deal with one of the carriers or the prophets or the the the, the uterus of the system you understand these people are just carriers because you see once you kill those people that are allegedly the faces of terrorism then you have a new generation with the same doctrine with the same system influenced in the same way of life so colonialism for example another system classic example of how this system was born successfully in the mind of the black people and how it has to this very day maintained its order you see once you understand that these systems were successfully born into our culture and into our heritage look at the, the ground on which they were sold don't focus on the ill treatment and the negative perception and the racist uh, agendas that and the racial slurs that are issued against black people on the continent and abroad don't focus on that those are just fruits of these systems <clears throat> but you have to focus on the ground on which they were sold the ground on which terrorism was sold colonialism slavery exploitation poverty crime all these things and then once you understand that they were sold on the ground of the mind the psychological infrastructure foundation then you will begin to move out of the mental prisons and the psychological prisons because you see the mind is the most powerful thing the psychological infrastructure of any human being is their greatest weapon on this planet and once those infrastructures are corrupted once they are contaminated then all the offsprings of all the people that come out of a person whose psychological infrastructures have been compromised will also be as compromised as the person as their ancestor 
You understand? It takes us back to the pre-colonial period and the pre-slave period. Then we shall understand and we shall begin from there. We shall begin with classic examples, colonialism, slavery, um, uh, uh, poverty, terrorism, common, common things. So in our second part, we are going to go deep in understanding how slavery, colonialism, and all these other systems were successful in Africa, focusing on how they were injected into the psychological and mental infrastructure of our ancestors. What is it that made our ancient kings and our ancient rulers, our sultans and our chiefs, what is it that eventually prompted them to, to, to allow our brothers and sisters to be shipped abroad as slaves? What is it that compelled the leaders on the African continent to let in the oppressor? How were they full systems, psychological, mental infrastructures? And after that, we shall begin, we shall first understand the, the reason for the success of these ancient evils of colonialism and slavery. And then we shall understand how the psychological and mental infrastructures were contaminated and corrupted that, you know, um, allowed these evils to succeed. And how is it that they have maintained their grip upon the black people, Africans at home and abroad? How is it that the continental African thinks in a, in a specific way uh, regarding the oppressor, regarding the black people? And how is it that the continental African thinks of his brother and sister abroad in a particular way? How is it that the, the Africans in abroad, especially our brothers and sisters that were shipped under slavery, how is it that they perceive Africa in a, in a specific way? Why is it that they think of Africa the way they do? And why is it that we think, we as black people think of the white people, quote unquote, or the oppressor in a particular manner? Then once we begin to, 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 to open those doors of knowledge, then believe me, we shall begin the journey out of mental captivity, out of psychological bondage, and rebuilding the psychological and mental infrastructures of the black people guaranteeing our complete and total liberation of our minds as a people on the continent and abroad. Tune in next time for part two of this series, Systems, Rebuilding Our Psychological and Mental Infrastructures, Disinfecting the Mind of Africans on the Continent and Abroad, Ensuring the Reunification and the Revival, the Resurrection of the Heritage, the Culture, the Roots of the Black African continent.